What's up, everyone? Ruben here from Tinder Dog PDX. This here is another episode of uh, Dog Trainer Troubleshooting. So I'm going to get out of the way so you can see this uh, contact form, and then we're going to talk about it. All right, so we got a four-year-old pit bull, lab mix, got some separation anxiety, um, destruction around the house, kicked out of daycare for excessive barking. They do rollerblade, you know, that's always good, um, but it still makes it really hard to train with him. Then, you know, they just obviously want him to be comfortable, not anxious all the time, don't have to rollerblade and walk without pulling, uh, feel comfortable playing with other dogs stop barking all the time and listen to commands. So, I mean, all of these things are super reasonable, you know? And so when we're going to be tackling things like this, you know, like just right off the bat from reading this thing, there's a few things that stand out to me that, you know, these weren't mentioned in the contact form. So I might think that the dog isn't maybe doing these things. So number one, I would definitely be getting more structure in the house and just more management. Dog is, um, being able to chew molding around the door and stuff. I mean, that right there tells me the dog doesn't use a crate. So I would be getting that dog into a kennel and probably sleeping in the crate as well. Um, but I mean, it, it can also sleep in the bed, but you know, it's like, if we're going to have those things, we need to have more structure throughout the day, right? The couch isn't a problem. The bed isn't a problem, but if you're going to do those things, um, your dog should have more structure throughout the day. You need to add more into your dog's day. Okay, but with the separation issues and the humans, right, this would tell me that I think the dog would benefit more by being in the kennel because we need to teach the dog how to be away from its owners. You know, it's it's lived a life, uh, you know, with this constant companion all the time, so it doesn't know how to be alone. So that would be one thing. Get the dog into a kennel, sleeping in the crate, and then using the crate throughout the day just at random times, you know, after your walks, after play. You know, when you're just not doing anything, you're just, oh, I'm just going to create the dog up for a half an hour, an hour or something like that. But we need to get the dog practicing how to be alone. OK. Um, we got kicked out of daycare, when, you know, for excessive barking. I think this is just, a you know, uh, another piece of what they're experiencing at their home. So, you know, again, getting the dog into a crate that's teaching them how to be alone and away from things. So um, I think that would definitely. Uh, help in that situation with uh the daycare okay uh you know they go rollerblading with him for 45 minutes which i think is great um but i would i would definitely add some more into that rollerblading alone isn't enough right that's only activating one part of the dog mostly the body okay and especially if the dog is already pulling that means they're not even really thinking on the walk or on the rollerblading you know like they're just going right so it's just a lot of physical exercise and this is a problem you know it's like when we only focus on the physical side of things we're always going to be like chasing our dog our dogs are athletes and they're going to be much more stronger than us so it's very important that we use something to activate their brains activate other parts of their body so i would put in that we should even be playing games with this dog playing tug with this dog playing flirt pole with this dog getting them to uh, ex like expend instinctual energy, right? Chasing things, killing things, shaking, right? Like those things are huge for the dog. I mean, we see this all the time in our training program, right? We play with the dog for five minutes and they're cooked because they're, they're activating different parts of their brain and it just works them mentally. Okay. But you also get the physical side in there, right? walking at your side so this is just you know teaching them how to loose leash walk right uh, we have many courses you know we have an online program that teaches you how to do this so um but you want to slow things down right because again that's activating the brain fast is easy slow is hard if the dog just goes 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 then i want to be going slow 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 right that's what's going to challenge them and actually get them to start thinking okay um feel comfortable playing with other dogs i mean it feels like it sounds like the dog is great with other dogs but you know this is a 
I think this is a common theme in most people's contact forms is they want their dog to play with other dogs. I think with the assumption that playing with other dogs is going to solve their problems. And it's not. It actually might even add to the problems. Okay, because if your dog gets into the habit of only playing with dogs that it sees, then that could lead to leash frustration when you're when you're out on the walk because they can't go and play with the dog that they see on the street because Hey, at daycare, I play with dogs all day long, right? And I'm not chill around them as well. So, you know, I would, it sounds like he's okay with playing with dogs. So I would actually add in more like not playing with dogs, actually learning how to chill around dogs. If you have a friend who has a dog, let, get him to like walk calmly around that dog. Get those dogs to hang on place together, right? Show the dog two sides of the coin. All too often, it's only just, I see dogs, I play with dogs. I see humans, I play with humans. Instead of, I see humans, I chill with humans. I see dogs, I chill with dogs. That's almost always a missing piece of the puzzle. Stop barking all the time and listening to commands. You know, the barking is just an, it's just a symptom of an underlying issue. We get this all the time as well. And if it works, right, if your dog's barking gets you to be like, hey, stop that right? Negative attention is still attention and it could just keep it going. Okay. So, um, I think working the dog, adding in some structure, those things are going to do wonders for so many things, teaching your dog place, right? Listening to command. So this would just where we go back to basics, you know, teach your dog marker words, good. Yes. And no, teach them sit down place, how to come when called, you know, all of this stuff should be done on a leash maybe even transfer to e-collar work later on. Um, but te training your dog is going to be big too. Utilize their food for training, you know. Um, but then you add in that structure as well. And, you know, again, we have like an online program that teaches you, you know, step one of like luring your dog, shaping behaviors, going into leash work, um, adding in distractions, things like that. Um, and it's a process, but you just got to slow things down right? Have a leash on your dog, be able to guide them around the house. Um, but this dog doesn't sound crazy. You know, it sounds like a very typical dog um, with unmet needs. So um, structure, mental, phys mental and physical exercise, teaching them obedience commands. Um, you know, the rollerblading, I think can definitely stay. And then getting your dog into a kennel, um, sleeping there overnight, you know, being away from you during the day. These would be some of the aspects that we would work on in our training program. And these are the things that we would coach the owners on. So uh, again, you know, if there's anything helpful in here, pause it, take notes. Um, a lot of these things, everybody's dog does. I mean, we say this all the time. All the dogs do pretty much the same exact thing. They just have a different flavor. Okay. and. Uh, almost always, it always starts at the bottom. Whenever we're looking at a dog and we're going to start training with the dog, we start at the very bottom and then we work our way up because we don't even know where this dog is at. So we don't want to make any assumptions. And if you're like, well, I don't know, I'm not sure. Just start over, start from the beginning, work your way up. You might get up, you might get to where you need to go faster. Um, but at least when you start from the beginning, you are doing your due diligence and ensuring that um, you're, you're, prioritizing clear communication with your dog. So thanks for watching.